Hi, welcome back to the channel. This video is the next in a series looking at the construction of an extension. In today's video, we're looking at the construction of a soakaway. And we'll go through the details of what a soakaway is, why it's needed, and how you go about constructing it. And we'll show you exactly what we've done here on site. But if you have time, before we get started, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, so a soak away is something that is required as part of building regulations. So building control will usually make you construct a soak away as part of an extension project. And basically what it does is it separates the rainwater that builds up on your roof from the foul water that's going through your drains. So it's basically designed to stop the drain system being overwhelmed with water that could run off and be used in the garden. So it's not foul water, it's water that's come from the sky and building control would prefer you to be able to accommodate that on your land and let it just go back into the water system. So we've had to build one here and the size of your soak weight is calculated by the size of your roof. So there's a relatively complicated calculation that's done that looks at the square meterage of your roof and then calculates how deep and wide and long your soak away needs to be to accommodate the worst case scenario storm water that builds up on that roof. So we're digging out ours here and it's two meters long, one meter wide and one meter deep. And here are the crates that we'll be putting into it. So the idea is with your soak away, once you've dug out the big hole, is that you should put things in there that are porous. So this is what the industry standard is. So these are plastic crates that are entirely hollow. So you can see through them, they're basically quite strong, but they will hold water. So once the soak away hole is filled with these crates, it's basically a big hollow structure that can hold a lot of water. So when that storm water comes off the roof, you can accommodate it in the soak away under the ground and then eventually that water will dissipate and disappear back into the soil around it. So you can see it's got round sections here that you can put the pipe into as you feed it down from the roof itself. So basically it's a pretty simple construction but it is really disruptive. So you can see here the size of the hole and the amount of earth that we're having to extract from the ground and take out through the house into the skip at the front. We touched on it in previous videos. This house is mid terrace, so it has houses on either side. And that has two problems for us here. Firstly, the access means that we have to go backwards and forwards through the house. So the homeowner who lives here, it's a lot of disruption, a lot of soil, a lot of mud going in and out of the house. Today, the weather's quite good, but on days when it's raining, it's really, really dirty. And the other issue, for us is that we can't get a mechanical digger through to the garden. So everything is having to be done by hand. And as you can see here, this is a clay area. So this house is in London. Uh, a lot of London has heavy clay. You can see the sides of the wall here. It's mostly dense clay, which is really thick and sticky and hard work to move by hand. So we're having to use one of these small shovels which is basically quite strong and enables us to lift out small sections of clay because clay is really heavy so if we were using a massive shovel here firstly it'd be hard to get it through the clay but also it becomes quite heavy and difficult to lift so we're now getting to the point where we've dug out the exact dimensions this will be signed off by building control they'll confirm that they're happy that it's the right dimensions to match the size of the roof and then we will fill it with the crates and then basically put some soil over the top and then uh, we'll re-turf the garden. But you can see the amount of disruption that it causes. If you've got a mature garden, a nice perfect lawn, then unfortunately you're going to have to dig one of these massive holes in your lawn depending on the size of your extension. And if you're doing a really big extension, you'll have to do a much bigger hole than this one. In terms of the rules and regulations, as well as the size of the hole, it needs to be a certain distance from the house. So it needs to be a minimum of five meters from the end of the extension. 
So we built this five meters away. So coming back from the house now, you can see the distance that it's set back. This is actually after we've finished filling the hole with the crates and putting the soil on top. So as we walk here, this section here that we're now approaching is the soakway itself. So it's five meters away. So it's quite a long way from the house itself. But you can see now we filled it all back in. We put the soil back on top. We obviously need to put some turf on top of that. And now we will have to pipe it all up. So we're going to have to put the pipework on the roof for the guttering. And then we will, we will be connecting the pipe to the crates that are underneath the ground. So we're having to dig out a trench now, a channel from where the soak away is located back to the house. And then we'll put the pipework into that channel into that trench connect it all up and then it will all be underground and will never be seen again so you wouldn't know that this soak away and the pipework system was here if you hadn't seen this video if you came back in a couple of months time when everything is all finished and the gardens completed you wouldn't know it's here but as it stands now we're now having to put the pipework in so you can see the joint system he's got there in the corner so this will sit underground so that pipe that's coming out on the front there will be underground and will be connected through a series of underground pipes to that soak away. So we're just fitting that now. There is going to be a patio put on this ground here. The, the, the area that he's standing on will actually be raised up as a patio. So all the work we're doing now is going to be buried underground. You won't see it once the work is all completed, the patio is in place and the garden is put back to the way it should be for the homeowners. But we're showing you this to show you what goes on and what you'll need to construct. So here's the joint. This is the 90 degree joint. This will, the down pipe will come off the roof and fit directly into the top of that. And then we are now fitting pipe work from the front section of that down into the soak away. So we've had to put this on a fall, obviously, because we need the water to run down into the soakway. So you need to make sure that when you're building your trench, when you're digging it, it's on an angle, on a fall, so that it will go and run away smoothly. Because the design is, if there's a lot of water on that roof, if you've got a storm and it's producing really heavy rainfall, then it needs to be able to flow rapidly down the downpipe, through these pipes that you can see here, that will be buried underground and into that crate system that we just showed you in the soak away under the ground. The big two meter by one meter by one meter hole is where all that water is going to end up. And then it will start to sink into the ground. But with a clay area like this, it takes a bit of time because clay holds water. And so it will take some time for that water to actually sink into the ground and disappear out of the soak away and that's why the hole has to be so big is to accommodate the fact that it will hold water in the time of a storm so what we're doing now is basically just burying this pipework into the soil so just fitting it all in making sure that it's on a fall so that the water runs down and basically it's a pretty straightforward simple plumbing job from here so the hard work is really in the digging and the removal of all of the waste and the soil fitting the pipework fairly straightforward this will all be jointed together so that it's uh, not going to come apart anytime in the future so you can see it's a push fit system and we're having to push quite hard to get those two joints to fit together and then we will fit the length of pipe onto the connector that's coming down from the down pipe so you can see we're just putting it all together now and then once this is done it will all be buried and that's the end of the system so you can see now we're just making sure that everything is all as it should be with the trench that it's all nice and solid and then we can start backfilling this start putting the soil back on top of it making sure that it's all nice and compact and there's not going to be any movement in the future because we want to make sure that that water gets from the roof to the soak away. That's the whole point of this design, is that the water has to move fast from the roof into that giant hole in the ground that we've just constructed. So it is worth taking a bit of time to make sure your pipework is all super solid, super tight, and not going to have any potential cracks or 
joint failures. And then once you've done that, it's literally just a case of burying it all under the ground and uh, moving on to the next part of the job. So we're just perfecting the final layout here, making sure that all the pipes are super solid, not going to move and have been connected up correctly. And that's basically it. That's pretty straightforward. So soak away should be factored into all of the works that you're doing. You'll need to do it after you've constructed the actual external part of your extension. But it's something that you need to make sure that your builder does because this would be highly disruptive. If you didn't do it at the time of the build, this would be an absolute nightmare. Once you've got a finished extension, you really don't want to start digging your garden up and moving tons of waste around your house and your site. It's really not something to be done later. You need to factor this in. Building control will insist on it and they want to check it and make sure it's been done correctly. So you can see here that we've actually got spirit level to make sure that we've got sufficient fall on those pipes to make sure that the water will run off quickly when it starts coming down through the system. So here's the pipe from the other angle. So we fed it all the way through. So we've backfilled this section at the top of the picture. So that's already been done. And now we're just connecting all of the pipes that go through all the way to the crate system that's sitting in the soak away itself. So pretty straightforward from here. Once you've got your pipes in, you've made sure you've got the right fall. Everything's in place. It's just a case of backfilling these pipes and then we will be fitting the patio on top of this later. So the pipe works are all in place. You can see here now we've done some prep work for the patio. That's going to be the next job. So we'll move on to that as the next video in this series. So watch out for that one coming shortly. But yeah, the patio is now ready to be laid. The pipe work's done. Soak away is built in place, signed off by building control. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you now know exactly what a soak away is and why it's needed and whether you can accommodate one in your garden. So if you've enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you on the next video in this series.